was the most boring material I'd ever read, and Barry was snoring in minutes. Those snores were the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Child, when my wife be snoring in the bed with me, I swear to God, I want to smother her in the corner. Okay? I don't know what this hoe talking about, okay? If I can't sleep, ain't nobody in this damn house. Okay? If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky is our black cold weather turban. As usual, our turbans will be given with a free gift. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about the untold story of Bury Me in Motown by Raynoma Gordy Singleton. In the tale of the new Motown, Suzanne DePass emerged as a pivotal figure in time. So I know y'all like, Nay, what you talk about in that title? Hold tight, I'm about to tell you, okay? Suzanne DePass, according to, no, Suzanne DePassy, we're going to call her DePassy, okay? Suzanne DePassy, according to the Sugar Ray, has always been a beautiful woman. I would concur. Not because she, you know, light-skinned with long hair, because she ain't nothing but really and truly another Wendy Williams, okay? But because, you know, she just had beautiful features. To me, she had that Caribbean, West Indian look that I love, right? She's always been a beautiful woman, but she has always had weight issues. Remember earlier, Sugar Ray had said that Suzanne DePassy and Diana Ross both had that same, by any means necessary, type, you know, gumption about them. Okay, girl. Barry would randomly pick on Suzanne DePassy. Okay, like he do all his people. Okay, like I said, Bertie Gordy, well, Bertie Gordy will fight. That's the part that I love about the man. But, uh, you know, Bertie Gordy just picks on people. Okay, as she calls it, Tess. One day they're at a party. Okay, Suzanne is there, right? Barry Gordy just out the blue says, look at Suzanne. Suzanne, you look like a gorilla. Get up and act like a gorilla, Suzanne. She said that Suzanne DePassy got up, scratching her body and going, ooh. Is that bitch crazy? Is she crazy? But the fact that she was willing to do it is what impressed Barry the Gordy. Because of the fact you're willing to do anything, you going to get up and act like a gorilla in front of your peers. They had to respect her because they, you know, she kept going up the line. Why? Because she was acting like a gorilla years ago when she first got there. Man, when I tell you I look back on how things were back in the day and thank you, Jesus. For things like sexual harassment laws, the Me Too movement, the Black Lives Matter movement. Thank you, God, for uh, things like that being put in place so that you can't have that kind of behavior in a business setting anymore. 
Sugar Ray, how sorry can you feel for a woman that act like a gorilla as one of Barry Gordy's tests? When you sold some vagina for Barry to Gordy, he put that test out there, you pass. The difference is, is that now Barry to Gordy is Barry to Gordy, okay? Back then, you had Barry to Gordy with the conch, the 4C hair, the jerry curl, the perm in the back, a long tail, you know, maybe one braid sticking out his head. You did it for that Barry. Suzanne DePassy did it for the rich and famous Barry. Okay, so girl, you can hold on to your judgment. These were the tests of our lives, but Suzanne didn't hesitate, nor did she look around. She stood up and began to do the gorilla routine, woo, 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 scratching her armpits and everything. The room roared with laughter, but Suzanne passed the test. I was mortified and embarrassed for her, but it was highly revealing. She didn't give a damn what she had to do. She'd do whatever it would take to make it. Like you, Sugar Ray, when you went in there and, and you had to suck on that white old man breast, okay? Y you would do whatever it took too. So the judgment, uh, give it up. Well, back in Rome, okay? While on the set of Mahogany in Rome, already millions of dollars over budget, Barry received a call from Pops. Your mother had a stroke. She's in a hospital now, but we don't expect her to live. It was a terrible dilemma for Barry, for each single day away from the set would cost hundreds of dollars. The family understood though. Really, there's nothing you can do. Mother might not make it through the night. We're sure she wouldn't want you abandoning your work needlessly. Stay in Rome and take care of your responsibilities there. So back at home, back at home base, we have uh, Sugar Ray and Barry the Gordy in close proximity to each other. This is after he got the news that his mother had a stroke. Today, he said softly, my mother will die. My face was quite near to his as he added, I have to make the decision to cut her off the machines. He fell silent once more, then asked me if I could stay with him for a few days. I agreed and helped out while the arrangements for the funeral were made. It was almost exactly 10 years since Lousy died. Again, a tragedy had produced a haven in which no weapons were allowed, and all that existed there for the two of us was love. After our closeness during Mother Gordy's funeral, however, Barry and I fell quickly back into a respectful, professional relationship. You have a note here? From Stephanie Mills, Vanita, that's Sugar Ray's assistant, asked, Barry liked to brag that I was the only one in the company who could get anyone, no matter how unapproachable, to come in and work with us. Now, he'd given me a dare to find someone for Stephanie. I had an inspiration. Vanita, the assistant, I'm going to get Bert Bacharach and Hal David in here. Within a couple of weeks, the name of that prolific songwriter duo had indeed been attached to a Stephanie Mills project, giving me another notch on my belt. And that's where I'm saying to myself, if you are so confident in Barry Gordy's confidence with you, why in the hell don't you exude more power over him? Okay? Like... You need to let him know what it feels like to not have you. You need to go somewhere else and show him, bitch, I don't need you. But like we were saying before, she got Stockholms. Bad. Okay? I mean, it's bad. By 1977, Barry and I had established a pleasant business relationship and had even begun more casual contact, usually involving the kids, especially Karen. 
Our son still residing with his father, though spending stretches with me as well, had played an important role in our improved communication. That summer, Carrie graduated from Beverly Hills High School, okay? Now, let me tell you the trick. Oh, my God. I, I'm telling you, them fire signs, you got to watch them bitches, okay? Because when I tell you their romanticism be on 10,000. Now, Libras are very romantic also, right? But, oh, that fire sign. Oh, my God. The only thing about them is you got to keep in mind that they can be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. They can be your Prince Charming on Monday and 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 that little doll baby from the the... The trilogy of Tur. What kind of doll baby was that? Some kind of headhunter type doll baby. But they, they can go from being, you know, your knight in shining armor, armor to that little, you know, hi yi yi doll baby from the trilogy of Tur. Okay, that's all I'm saying, right? What was, I don't know. At the graduation for Carrie, right? They sitting together, you know, mom and dad, Sugar Ray and Barry sitting together, right? You know, at the commencement celebration right he nudges sugar ray and was like look over there and it was sugar ray's parents bird gordy had flew in her parents to see carrie graduate okay again another grand feat that's what he do girl i mean that's what he do that's how the ninjas be getting you girl hold on i need to break Even my sister my sister being an Aries, like she is just, she just does these grand gestures, girl. And then when she feel like it, she will kick you up your ass, literally. If she feels like it got better, Barry took all of us out to Chasen's or Chasen's. I don't, I don't live in California. I don't know. Okay. But Barry took all of us out to Chasen's or Chasen's, one of Beverly Hills finest establishments in honor of Carrie's graduation. When you're done saying goodbye at the airport, why don't you come back? I'm enjoying our being together. He smiled like old times. Watch. This dumb girl go back to the house with Barry the Gordy. Okay. He got this huge mansion, child. He got this huge mansion. They playing games. <laughs> Cat and mouse games. You hear me? All right. She playing, what am I going to wear, Barry, to sleep? Bitch, you could have stopped off at your house and got some damn pajamas, but okay. Barry takes her to his lavish closet full of stuff, finds her a pair of silk pajamas to wear. Mm-hmm. Girl, stop playing with me. Barry yawned. Well, I'm going to go to bed now. For a moment, I forgot my place in time, thinking just like the old days that we'd both turn in together. And then he said, come on, you can sleep in my room. Take off your clothes. Get ready for bed, Barry said, seeing me standing there like a lightning struck me. And so began a tale I never would have written in my wildest fantasies. Each morsel of the experience was more surprising and luxurious than the next. When I went with all my courage to his bed, his laughter at me in those big pajamas rang out. You know she ain't nut, but you know, that big. So even Bird the Gordy's clothes is big on her, okay? So he laughing at her in the bed with his pajamas on. Oh, he laughing at you for a whole lot more, girlfriend. We lay in the bed together while he played music, which we discussed with more laughter and more rhapsody. We still have the same opinions about music, he said. The music and our harmonious laughter drowned out the noise of the past. And when he shut off the tape player, turning the lights down low, a boyish look of innocence came over him as he asked, Would you mind reading to me for a while? He handed me the book. I opened it and began to read with the soft, sensual voice of one reading from the Arabian Nights. Even though this book was on building stereo components. Building stereo components, all you need for a stereo component set, girl, is, is, is some planks. You run down there to the lows, you get you some planks, then you get the center blocks. Okay, you put the center blocks down first, then you put one plank, then you put another center block. You know, maybe a third one if you're trying to be extra, okay? Then you put another plank on top of it, you know? And there go your whole uh, stereo system, 
Okay, you you, you 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 get your little component set and you put it there. You put a couple of incense holders at the top. You know, all your good records on the left and the right. You know, your stir component set somewhere in the middle. And then there you go. It was the most boring material I'd ever read. And Barry was snoring in minutes. Those snores were the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Child, when my wife be snoring in the bed with me, I swear to God, I want to smother her with a puller. Okay? I don't know what this hoe talking about. Okay? If I can't sleep, ain't nobody in this damn house sleeping. Okay? My wife's not going to be the only person laying in, uh, next to me sleep soundly. I, what? Some couples sleep separately because of snoring. Okay? She's a lot. She is just so, ugh. She just be annoying to me. The nights and days turn to weeks and months. There I was in Bear Lair, one of the most exclusive residential areas in the world, sleeping chastely with Barry Gordy in the same bed. During this time, we never became lovers. Oh, he plotting on you. I don't even know why you doing that because girl, I mean, didn't he make you wait for the ding dong before? Girl. The fact that Barry and I were not sexually intimate felt natural to me, of course. Of course it did. Physical lovemaking was never the height of our passion. Rather, what connected our souls was our love of family and of music, and our dream of etching out a great volume of history. Now, one of these nights, stay together. Ugh. Girl, 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 I just want to hit you in the head with a bat, girl. Okay, but anyway, day in a bed together. Okay, Barry pitching woo. Barry spoke. I was angry for a long time that you could leave me. I depended on you. And all of a sudden, I found myself dealing with all these people I wasn't used to. I really was mad at you. Girl. A lot of times behind uh, men's mistreatment is because they hurting little boys on the inside. That's what happened. It wasn't necessary for me to say that I'd been a little mad myself. He went on. Another thing, you leaving me made it impossible for me to ever really be happy. I mean, I've gained all these riches, but I will never have another woman who will love me for just me. And not because I'm Barry Gordy. When it comes down to Sugar Ray, I want to dummy chop her because you have to know by now that this is his spirit right now in this moment. Okay? Because he can easily, in three moments later, turn back into that damn dragon. Okay? So that's why, you know, she is very frustrating to me because she is well aware of his Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type uh, behavior. She knows this. She's been going back and forth with him like this for years, okay? And he's in a vulnerable moment. He lost his mother. Timing is everything, you know? And he wants to be vulnerable with her in that moment. That's it. So this bitch jumps out there and says to him, I love being here with you, Barry. She said it was the most stupid greatest chance she ever took in her life one thing i will never do is i don't care if i love somebody's dirty pissy funky ugly draws you hear me i love my wife with every public hair in my chin that sound gross my bad but trust me if my wife break my heart she'll never hear the words i love you again never Okay, I, I don't care if she doing what she do best in the bedroom to me. Okay, never. Okay, because that's all they want. Once they get that from you, then the game is won. And you know this ninja is known for tests. It was the greatest risk I'd ever taken. My tiny voice, my broken sentences, those words now dangling in midair, up in uncertain darkness of the room. My heart was pounding. What had I done? Yeah, bitch, what had you done? And then I heard the glorious sound of his soft voice. As if in the middle of a fall, I'd been caught by his strength and his certainty. Yes, he began. Why don't you go back to your house 
for the time being. I understand that you need to be with the kids. I'll think about what you said and I'll get back to you. already done so please remember to like share to facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com now remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down my naysayers my patron loves you babies have a good one